geospatial processing flowcharts help us communicate our workflows so others can replicate for their own analyses. They have four main components, an input, an operation, an output, and connections between all of these. Let's have a look at how we put it all together. So first of all, you need to know that there are different input and output file types. We have a table, we have rasters, and we have vectors. So three different types of inputs. And these can also be outputs. Now then we also have operations. So the way that we work a processing flowchart is simply to connect these together. So for example, we may start with a table that goes to some sort of operation and then links through to an output vector. This could be a CSV file, for example, that's a table of points. We run it through the operation that adds the XY data as points and we output to a vector. So you can see that this has that standard flow of input, operation and output. Now, sometimes the operation needs two inputs. So, for example, we might actually need two tables to connect together into this particular operation. So not all operations need more than one out, need more than one input, but some do. For example, a clip, a union and an intersect all need a minimum of two inputs for it to work. Now we can also build from here. So for example, we have an output here. Now this output might actually be part of the flow to go as an input to something else. So all we need to do is to add another operation and, and another output and connect these up together. And in this way, we can continue to build our flowchart as we go through our analysis. Importantly, you need to identify what the different inputs and outputs and operations are. So you can attribute this by text. So for example, if, if this, what, this one was add X, Y data, you need to write in that that that's exactly what it is. And you also include your parameters. So perhaps you've got this one, maybe this is a buffer, and so you might be buffering by 500 metres, for example. So you would write buffer 500 metres, and then your output would be 500 metre buffer file, something like that. So it really is that simple. Make sure that you've got your input, your operation, your output, and your connectors, and that your file types are represented by the correct shapes. So we have our tables, our rasters, and our vectors. This helps to demonstrate that you know what file type is going in and what file type is coming out as well.